that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as an actor. What do explosions, bullets, criminals, quick cuts and cliches all have in common? It's got to be a Jason Statham film, doesn't it? He has had a very successful career and all in a very short space of time in the industry. From unorthodox beginnings to superhero status, he certainly has surprised many with his range of talents. Jason grew up in South East London as a typical streetwise kid, but luckily he avoided trouble by pursuing his interests in sport. He toured the world as a member of the British National Diving Squad, but Jason soon realised his sporting talents weren't going to pay the bills. This led him to spend his time out of the pool hawking knock-off designer goods in busy London shopping districts. While he was on the streets, he was spotted by a talent scout and offered a modelling contract for the brand French Connection. Jason was selected to model because of his everyman qualities, which his current manager, Steve Chassman, believes is the basis of his success. I think people respond to him because he's a regular guy. Uh, he's very accessible, and I think that you know he's not classically trained, and if he wasn't acting, he'd be doing a regular kind of job. And I think people with actors, they try to, they enjoy actors who they find accessible, people that they hopefully can identify with. Modeling began the chain reaction that led to his first acting role in Guy Ritchie's Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Aware of Statham's shady past, Ritchie asked the untrained actor to impersonate an illegal street vendor and to convince him to buy imitation jewellery. Well, he was so convinced, Ritchie bought four sets and Jason refused to return the money at the end of the audition. Playing the hustler Bacon made Jason a star and his standout performance was due to his knowledge of gangsters and what makes them so appealing. Uh, I don't know, it's a bit of a fantasy people get into, you know, they want to sort of live uh, through the eyes of uh, those kind of people, you know, a bit more interesting and a bit more sort of flamboyant, a bit more to say about themselves than, uh, than most people. Very intriguing, I've met a few and uh, they're uh, quite charismatic to say the least. That gangster's charisma had definitely rubbed off on Statham and he went full-on villainous to play a kidnapper in the thriller Cellular. This was the first time Jason had played a criminal with immoral intentions, and he was applauded by producer Dean Devlin for being able to play a conflicted character that was as cold-hearted as he was charming. First time I saw Jason Statham in a movie was actually The Transporter, and he's just electrifying. He's one of these guys who, when, once he's on the screen, it's hard to take your eyes off of him. And we wanted our villain to not only be frightening but to be charismatic to to to, to be a, a leader a powerful character and jason brings all of that to the role jason has an enormous physical ability as well as an enormous emotional ability and he brings both dis disciplines to this film it's true both these disciplines make jason a perfect action star he proved this in the brutal no frills action film rogue assassins opposite the martial arts master, Jet Li. But the balance of drama to ass kicking is something Statham doesn't want to avoid. It's a good action film because all the action is sort of parlayed off the drama. You know, every piece of action that comes, it's a really emotional fight. Uh, and he's, you know, most of my sort of battles are just really violent because he's just, you know, his life is uh, just, in, it's just crumbled. He's in a terrible place. And a terrible place is exactly where Jason ended up in his next film, Death Race. He played a framed convicted killer that's sent to prison where he's forced to compete in a car race in which inmates brutalise and kill one another to survive. And if victorious, they gain their freedom. What a plot. And Jason agrees. This is the kind of movie I want to go see. I mean, I've done, you know, movies that I've been very proud of and, you know, I've also done movies of a... Uh, that are action orientated, that aren't quite what I'd like to, to pay and go and see. Uh, but this one really would get my, uh, my $10 for sure. I mean, it's a very adult uh, uh, form of entertainment and uh, it, certainly, uh, it certainly plugs itself into what uh, my, my taste is all about. So now Jason had built himself a solid reputation as an action hero. But what separates the men from the boys in this genre? Well, it's got to be the blokes who are willing to do their own stunts, doesn't it? I mean, uh, I had a big interest in being a stuntman when I was a kid. And uh, the, I suppose the most rewarding part about making an action film is 
you know, the different challenges and skills that you have to learn along the way to try and, um, you know, do a decent enough job and, you know, make, uh, make all the big stunts believable. The Transporter series are the best example of Statham's stunts, with every type of transportation utilised to its full action potential. Director Olivier Megaton was impressed by Jason's ability to keep up with the stuntmen. Each time there is a stunt thing, he was there, you know. He was there and wanted absolutely to do it, you know. Absolutely. He said, I want to do it. I can do it. And uh, that, is, uh, that is great because each time you have to, you know, especially in an action film, you know, it's so... Uh, uh, the tricky thing is to, uh, to try to make fit the, the stunt, the stunt guys and the, and the like doubles and so on with the with the actor and with Jason there is no way because he's doing everything. That can-do attitude enabled Jason to dive away from the explosions and be hired for the plot-rich thriller The Bank Job. Breaking back into his crafty criminal character, Jason enjoyed the film's historical narrative and clever dialogue. Plus, it was great to have a break from all that bashing. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite pleased it wasn't a stunt, you know, a stunt sort of driven film. I mean, I'm, you know, I do plenty of those as it is. You know, for me to sort of take a breath and not worry about getting injured and, you know, having a recovery period after a film is, uh, is quite a, a nice relief for me. Um, I do enough of that, you know, running around beating people up. The bank job was a challenging choice for Jason because it was the first time he'd played a character that wasn't fictional. Statham acted as Terry Leather, the 1970s London criminal who helped orchestrate the Baker Street bank heist. Jason was lucky enough to draw on inspiration from one of the actual members of the crew who busted open the safes to expose a wealth of riches and British royal secrets. Roger actually um, found somebody that um, was one of the original sort of gang and um, he came to the set and uh, he had an opinion uh, uh, of several sort of situations that arose within our film, you know. And uh, we picked his brains, um, uh, respectfully of course, and um, yeah, he, was a, he was a great asset to have. But Statham couldn't dodge the bullets any longer, and his comeback to the genre was for the biggest action film in recent times, The Expendables. Directed by Sylvester Stallone and with an all-star cast of action legends, how could Jason possibly say no to all his bros? I really like the concept, you know, a bunch of, you know, regular guys with all these sort of insecurities and uh, problems of their own and at the same time when they're put in a situation where they need to focus and kick ass, as they say over here, uh, they can all do that. So, um, yeah, it's a... Uh, a, a testosterone fueled uh, lineup, as uh, you'll probably find out when you see the, the motley crew that Sly assembled. Stallone certainly knows how to make an action film, but he wanted to utilise Statham's character to help build the dramatic elements of the plot. You know, you've got to have a little bit of brains to go with the brawn, right, Sly? I saw privately another side to him that had not been tapped on film. I don't know if it could be tapped, whether it was a choice he made, but the more we talked about it, I said, I think, you know, you, you have a sense of optimism. And then we talked about his life and we realized, you know, he's had ups and downs and hurts. And go, I gotta bring that. Because you now have to have the same issues as the audience. And when you have the same issues as the audience, they're gonna be with you. And the audience joined Jason as he continued to grind out his fast-paced flicks, culminating in the exclusive Killer Elite co-starring none other than Robert De Niro and Clive Owen. The trio got on like a house on fire, and Owen, who plays Statham's opponent, really enjoyed the level of experience Jason brought to their fight scenes. I think he's fantastic, you know, as, as for this kind of stuff doing. I had two huge fight scenes, they were both with Jason in the film, and I don't think there's anyone around better to do those films. He's no, he's, he's, he's very, very skilled and accomplished at that stuff. But beating Clive up isn't the only thing he's good at. Director Gary McKendry was enthralled by Jason's confidence to choose the most challenging character in the script. Jason was my first choice for this role. And when Jason decided to do the role, I was ecstatic. Um, Danny's a really difficult character. And what really pleased me was when Jason read the script, he initially went straight to Danny, which is a difficult choice, you know? As I said earlier, Danny is a character who does um, bad things for good reasons. He's trapped between two worlds, neither of whom he can talk to. So Danny essentially is a man of secrets 
and I think I've always loved the way Jason has played Silence. So, at this point in his career, some might be questioning whether Jason will strut out of his slick-talking, tough-guy persona into something more wholesome, such as a romantic comedy, maybe? I don't know. Why do I want to do that? I don't know. I'd be horrified if you did. You would? Yep. Yeah? Well, <laughs> I don't think it's... You know, people play to their strengths, you know? Hugh Grant does it rather well. That's why he keeps doing it. And um, I don't think there's any point in me trying to challenge uh, someone like that uh, at doing... Uh, a job like he does, so mm. I'll stick to the old uh, likeable rogues, I think. Yeah, I agree, Jay. Stick to what you do best. Big action blockbusters and gangster-filled crime thrillers. You know, you've got to admire the bulletproof Brit, Jason Statham. From his unconventional foray into film, he's now dominating one of Hollywood's biggest genres. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and MNC.TV.